In section 11.2, we will be focusing on the areas of parallelograms and triangles. After watching this video, you will be able to calculate the areas of parallelograms and triangles. Instead of just giving you the formulas, we are going to prove the formulas today and show why they work. If you'd like to look at a different way to prove it, you can refer to your books on page 516. Let's go ahead and find the area of this right triangle. Well, we already know how to find the area of a rectangle, so can we duplicate this right triangle and create a rectangle out of it? Let's go ahead and prove why this would work. We know that we have one angle in the right triangle that's 90 degrees, which means the other two angles would have to add up to 90 degrees. So I'm going to call the one angle x, and I'm going to call the other angle 90 minus x then. Once we duplicate the triangle, flip it and rotate it to create our rectangle, we then have a right angle at angle D. But then if we combine those two angles, the x and 90 minus x, the x's will eliminate, which would leave us with two more 90 degree angles. So we indeed have created a rectangle. So if we double our right triangle, we end up getting a rectangle once we manipulate it and flip it and put it together. So can we all agree that the area of that right triangle would have to be half of the area of the rectangle ABCD? We know how to find the area of that rectangle because we talked about that in section 11.1. .1. So to find the area of this rectangle here, we would do BC times AB, which is base times height. But we all agree that to find the area of the right triangle, it's half of the area of the rectangle. So to find the area of our right triangle, we could do one half base times height. Now that we know how to find the area of a right triangle, it will help us find the areas of our acute and obtuse triangles. So we want to try to create some right triangles whenever possible. We want to find the area of triangle ABC. Well, that triangle is made up of the two right triangles here. The yellow one, triangle ADB, and the blue one, triangle CDB. So after we drew in that altitude, we then create two right triangles. So the area of triangle ABC could be represented by the area of triangle ADB, the yellow one, plus the area of triangle CDB, the blue one. Well, we know how to find the area of triangle ADB since it's a right triangle, and we just talked about that. So we're going to do one half of our base, which is AD, times our height, which is BD. Keep in mind, our base and height always have to form a right angle. Then to find the area of triangle CDB, we're doing one half of our base, which is CD, times our height, which is BD again. Looking at this, we can factor out one half BD from both of those terms. So let's go ahead and do that. If we factor out a one half BD, we're left with the quantity of AD plus DC. Let's take a look at our diagram to determine what that is. If we add those two segments together, what does it result in? It just results in segment AC. So we could find the area of this triangle by doing one half of BD times AC, which is yet again one half of the entire base of the triangle times the height. Moving on to our obtuse triangle, we are going to approach this problem just like we did our acute triangle above, in that we are going to create right triangles. So we have to draw in our altitude AD. Keep in mind that this altitude is an exterior altitude in our obtuse triangle. So if we think back to our unit on altitudes and medians, we always have to have an exterior altitude for an obtuse triangle. We want to find the area of that green triangle ABC. In order to do so, let's look for some right triangles. If we could find the area of the entire large triangle ADB and then subtract off the area of this smaller purple right triangle ADC, wouldn't we be left with the green? So that's our goal. So to find the area of triangle ADB, the large right triangle, we do one half of our base DB times our height AD, and then to find the area of triangle ADC, which is the purple triangle, we do one half of our base, which is DC, times our height of AD. 
Just like above, we can factor out something here. And we can actually factor out a 1 half AD from both of those terms, which leaves us with the quantity of DB minus DC. Let's look at our diagram to see what that is. If we take this entire segment DB and subtract off segment DC, what are we left with? We're left with segment CB. So DB minus DC is just BC. So we could find the area of this triangle by doing one half of AD times BC, which is yet again one half of our base times our height. Moving on to finding the area of our parallelogram. Since we already know how to find the area of triangles, let's try to create some triangles here to work with. So if we draw in the diagonal AC, you see how we've created two triangles now? Let's think about what we know about a parallelogram. We know that opposite sides of the parallelogram are congruent. And now we can use reflexive property on AC to then get that triangle ADC and triangle CBA are congruent by side side side. So is it safe to say that that parallelogram is made up of two congruent triangles? So if we could just find the area of one of those triangles and multiply it by two, then we'll find the area of our parallelogram. So I'm just going to work with the yellow triangle here. So we want to do two times the yellow triangle will give us the area of the parallelogram. We know how to find the area of a triangle. We have to do one half base times height. The base of our yellow triangle is DC. And then I drew in the altitude for the height, so that's AE. Notice here we're doing two times one half. That's just going to reduce to one. So we're left with DC times AE for the area of our parallelogram. Well, what is DC and what is AE? Well, DC is just the base of the parallelogram, and AE is the height of the parallelogram. They form right angles. So reviewing our general ideas, to find the area of a right triangle, we do 1 half base times height. To find the area of an acute triangle, we do 1 half base times height. And to find the area of an obtuse triangle, we do 1 half base times height. To find the area of a parallelogram, we do base times height. And I just want you to keep in mind for all of those bases and heights, they all have to be perpendicular or from right angles with each other. Keep in mind for triangles as well as parallelograms, let me show you here. If I were to rotate that parallelogram counterclockwise, the base would now be CD and the height would be AE. The base is not always necessarily at the bottom of the shape. And that holds true for both parallelograms as well as triangles.